And the Department of Justice announced the U.S. Postal Service can deliver prescribed abortion medication even in states where abortion access is severely restricted. The department's Office of the Legal Counsel writes in an opinion that sending pills through the mail does not violate a federal law if the sender does not know the drugs will be used illegally. Earlier this week, the FDA also gave pharmacies the ability to fill prescriptions for one of those pills as long as they meet certain requirements. ABC News senior policy reporter Ann Flaherty, an obstetrics and gynecology specialist and vice president, medical director of Planned Parenthood of the Rocky Mountains, Dr. Christina Tassi, joins me now for more on the impact of all of this. Uh, thank you both for being on. And I, I want to start with you. How significant is this new legal opinion from the DOJ, especially for those living in states where abortion is severely restricted or, or banned? Well, for now, Diane, it, it just raises a lot of questions. So to take a, a step back, this debate has been brewing for months now. It's really accelerated in the past 24 hours. We got word late last night from CVS and Walgreens that they're willing to participate in this program to distribute these abortion pills, of course, with a prescription, um, and they have to meet certain requirements first. That should make it a lot more widely available, but only in states where it's legal. They say that they're, they still want to comply with state laws. Now you've got the Justice Department saying they don't think it's illegal to mail these pills inside states where it is illegal because nobody knows exactly how they're going to use it. So, I, you know, I think we're just going to see a lot of more questions, see this play out in courts before Americans start to see this show up in pharmacies. Now, Dr. Tassi, previously these drugs could only be ordered and prescribed and dispensed by a certified health care provider. Uh, so how does uh, allowing qualified pharmacies dispense at least one of these drugs, uh, what does that do for access to patients, but also could it drive more doctors to get certified to prescribe it? So I hope it drives more doctors to get certified to prescribe it. Um, I'll take the first part of your question about how will this expand access. Well, previously, patients had to get this medication in person in a healthcare setting. And now that um, this change is a permanent change, patients can access this if they're in a rural area and they have a participating pharmacy, their physician in their rural community can prescribe it and they can get it from their local pharmacy. So this really expands access for patients um, in many, many areas. And that is really monumental and crucial at a, at a time right now where anything we can do to expand access is going to benefit so many patients. Now, and and the second, oh, sorry, go ahead, doctor. Oh, no. And I was going to say, um, hopefully more providers in a more diffuse area will also become certified because the patient will not have to get the medication at a certain healthcare facility. They'll be able to prescribe this just like any other medication and send their patient to a pharmacy to pick it up. Now, and what legal challenges can we expect uh, to both the DOJ's recent opinion and the FDA's decision? So I expect that you're going to see some uh, aborts, abortion rights groups weighing in on this, um, supporters trying to argue that only the FDA really has the power to decide whether or not Americans can access a certain drug. And they're going to argue that these state bans are unlawful. You might even see arguments about interstate commerce. Uh, states can't prevent uh, the sales of products being brought into their state. Um, so I, I would expect that this is going to play out in the courts, as I said, before it actually shows up in pharmacies. So that's all TBD. All right. And Dr. Chassi, in order for pharmacies to dispense these pills, the pharmacies have to become certified. You still need a prescription as well. So what is that process like and how long do you think it'll be before pharmacists are able to start dispensing this drug? I, I wish I knew that timeline. I, I wish it were tomorrow. Unfortunately, I don't think that what we're going to see because there is a certification process. Um, but it is a step in the right direction to expanding access and helping patients get the abortion care they need um, and not have it depend solely on where they live and how they can and what means they have to travel. All right. And Flaherty, Dr. Christina Tassi, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.